Hey everyone, and welcome to this live session. We're gonna be decorating some fun cookies and maybe some cupcakes with a nice little summer theme. So to go with the nice warm weather we're having here. And to get started, we're gonna outline our cookies with royal icing. So I have some 12 inch pastry bags prepped with cutlers. And all I need to do is cut the end, put a tip on and fill up my bag. And I have some colors already mixed in a few different shades of royal icing. And I'm gonna start with my light blue and that's gonna be the background color for my shirts. So I just wanna choose a nice tip that'll be good for outlining. So something a little bigger like a number three tip or a number four is always good for outlining on projects. So we'll get that in place. I'm gonna secure it with the ring and I'm gonna get my frosting loaded up. And anytime I make colors like this, I like to make extra. So I made more than I need of the stiff color. And then I'm gonna use the excess and add a little more water and use that to make my uh, loose frosting or my flood or flow, whatever you like to call it, doesn't really matter as long as you have the right consistency. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of this loaded up into my bag so I have it for outlining and details. And I'm gonna save the rest to frost the inside of my shirts with. I'm gonna make cute little Hawaiian print shirts and I think they're gonna have little palm trees on them. So nice, fun little design, perfect for summer beach weather. So I'm gonna get my bag loaded up. You can see I didn't put too much frosting in there, just a spoonful is great. You wanna lay that bag, right, so that it's in the palm of your hand. And you'll notice that I twisted it at the top. You're gonna to hold that twist between your thumb and your index finger, right? So it's kind of pinching it in place. This is gonna keep the frosting from shooting out the top of the bag, ending up all over your forearm, maybe all over your project as well. And it's also gonna help apply pressure to the frosting, which means you'll have to squeeze less. It's better for your hands. Royal icing is actually a pretty stiff project. So if you work with it for a long period of time and you're not used to doing that, you won't quite have the hand strength you need to get through it without hurting your poor little hands. So just be kind to your hands and always twist at the top of the bag, right? You can see this means that I've got my fingers wrapped all the way around that buildup of frosting and I can squeeze with everybody. And I think that's my um, first and best lesson in piping is not to do this job. When you wrap the bag like that around your index finger, you can see now all I'm squeezing with is my fingertips and that it takes a lot more pressure from your fingertips and all the tendons in your back of your hand to get the frosting to come out and it's much harder to do and you have to use a lot more pressure. So always make sure you're holding it so that buildup of frosting is in the palm of your hand. Then you're using all the muscles in your fingers, your palm, the back of your hand, all those tendons to squeeze and it's gonna be much easier on everybody. When we start piping, I'm gonna do this one-handed so I don't block the view, but in general, for cookies, you wanna hold the bag straight up and down, and I'm right-handed, so I'm squeezing with my right hand, and I'll just use my left hand to brace that bag. That makes it a little more steady. For the sake of our live today, I'm gonna to leave my left hand off, just so that it's easy for everyone to see, but keep in mind, if you're having problems or you're a little shaky, bracing your hand like that means that you have a nice, sturdy kind of triangle, and you're bracing both forearms on the edge of the table, the tray, or whatever you're piping on, and it's gonna make for a much sturdier, much steadier line. So anytime I pipe, I'm just gonna to touch the surface, start squeezing, and as I squeeze, I'm gonna lift up and let my frosting drop into place. And you can see that's gonna give me really nice, beautiful, clean lines. Gravity will do the work for you and make for pretty cookies, right? So anytime I wanna change directions, I just touch gently and then go a new way. And occasionally with royal icing, you'll see right there, I got a pop, there's a little air bubble. It's a whipped meringue, that's gonna happen. Don't worry about it too much. If you can't make the line join up, or like in this case, it's going at kind of a funny angle, a lot of times I just take a toothpick and you can just gently remove that area and then start again, right? So we have a clean, clean execution. Sometimes you might get a pop in the middle of a line. 
a lot of times, like there's just the hint of an air bubble right there, I just go back and fill it in. That way we're gonna keep our runny frosting on the cookie because we have a nice outline. So think of it a little bit like a dam, it's gonna hold all that liquidy frosting in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and outline my other two shapes really quickly. And then my t-shirts will be ready to flood. And once I get my t-shirts outlined, I'm gonna load up a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna outline my flip-flops as well. And for these cookies, I've actually used a onesie cutter that I've just cut the bottom off of. It makes a real easy transition to give you t-shirts instead of onesies and it makes it a more versatile cutter. Sometimes before I order new cutters, I always try and see if I have something that I can tweak slightly, just really easily. With this one, it's either an X-Acto knife, a pizza cutter, or even a bench scraper. You just cut the bottom off the onesie. It's really easy to do, not that much extra work, and it keeps me from having to keep another cutter in stock. But these make a great size and a great width to do the Hawaiian shirts on because I have a lot of area in there where I can do a pattern. So I'm gonna set my bag of blue to the side and I think I'm gonna make the bottom of my flip-flops yellow and I have a nice kind of golden buttery yellow here. Great color for pineapples and other fun summer stuff, but I'm gonna use it for the bottom of my flip-flops right now. So I'm just gonna grab another large tip, secure it on my bag, and just load up a little bit of this. Every once in a while, just need to push the bag a little further in there just to make sure things line up. And grab a different tip. That one's not quite fitting on there. There we go. Every once in a while, just get one that's funny doesn't want quite want to go into place sometimes the bags are just a little too bulky and you just have to squish them down a little bit extra so I'll make sure my yellow is nice and well mixed up and anytime you're using royal icing you always want to make sure you're covering it when you're not using it it's not like buttercream once it dries out it is dried. You can't just kind of mix it back in the way you can, say, a crust and buttercream and get rid of that. It won't absorb the moisture again. It'll just stay in there in crusty, chunky bits and give you problems when you're going to ice things. So you always want to make sure that you're covering it nice and well and that it doesn't have a lot of extra air in there. So for my flip-flops, I'm just going to pick a starting point and I want to make sure that I'm giving it a nice little curve on one side for an arch, going around and making it wider at the top. And I've got all right flip-flops. When you cut these kinds of cookies, uh, you can always cut right ones and left ones, or you can just do a single side. That's up to you. If you want to do cute little pairs of shoes or flip-flops, that's a neat little trick. You only need one cutter. You cut them out and then flip half of them so that they're facing the other direction and you can get little pairs. I like to start right there at the arch just to make sure that I get a nice little subtle curve there. Curve around at the back and meet up with that line. And you can see that gives us a nice, nice little transition there. Sometimes with rounded shapes, or other odd shapes like this, it can take a little bit of practice to find and pick a good starting point. And a lot of times I do it where there's a subtle change of direction. So that curve where it's meeting up with the kind of straight lines. So then when you overlap them, you get a nice little transition and it looks really clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the last one. And then we'll be ready to start making some of our flood colors. And while we do that, these little outlines will have a chance to set up and dry just a little bit.
awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and load up a little bit of my other two colors in the bags that I have prepared here. So I have some green and some brown, and I'm going to use those a little later in this project. And in the case of the brown, the stiff on another project. So I just want to make sure that I'm pulling some out ahead of time so that I have the stiff and I don't have to go back and make color later. And then I'm going to thin my colors out and load them up into other bags to use my flood. And flood is kind of a personal thing. Everybody has their own consistency that they like. I always encourage people to play around with their frosting a little bit just to see where they like it. And some jobs also might require it to be a little thicker than others. I'm just going to get a little of that brown too. I'm going to save those for later. So I have four colors that I'm using today. My yellow is a mix of two colors, lemon yellow and sunset orange. So it's more of my lemon yellow and just a hint of that sunset orange. And that's going to give it that kind of buttery egg yellow color. So if you only have lemon yellow color and you want to make shades that are more like an egg yolk butter kind of profile, just adding a little bit of that sunset orange is a great way to do it. I have my light blue, which is a mix of royal blue and just a tiny little touch of violet. Right? And then my brown is a mix of buckeye brown. And then I added just a little bit of that orange as well, just to give it a nice kind of warm tone. So it kind of goes with everything else. And then lastly, my green is actually a mix of two blues sky and royal and then just a little bit of that lemon yellow too and you can see from the tone it's more blue than yellow so it has a bit of that kind of aqua you feel and it's a little heavier on the blue than on the yellow and it'll give you a nice kind of um i would say dark sea foam kind of shade so i'm going to take all of these colors and i've got a little bit of water over here and I'm just going to add water just a little bit at a time until I get the consistency that I want. And so my light blue I'm going to use for the background area on my shirts. And so I'm going to go a little bit looser with this than I will with some of the colors like the green and the brown where I'm going to use them for details. So I'm just going to start with about half a teaspoon of water and just mix it in slowly. And typically per cup of frosting, it takes about two teaspoons to make a nice flood consistency. But depending on the time of year, where you are in the world and what's going on and actually how you like your frosting, it may take more or less. So a bit of it's personal preference and some of it's also weather. But you can see it's already much looser than it was just by adding a little bit. So I like to just drop it in slowly to make sure that I'm not getting it too runny. It's much easier to make frosting looser than it is to make it stiffer again. And we're looking for a frosting that will spread out nicely and settle on itself without being too runny. If it's too runny, no matter how big those borders are, it's not going to keep it on the cookies. And I always suggest outlining first, especially if you're new to working with royal icing. That way you make sure that your flood stays on your cookies and you don't have to worry about it running off. And it also helps because you're practicing your piping more with each project because you're doing the outline, then you're doing the flood, and then you're doing the details rather than just going straight into flooding things. And so I'm just waiting to look at how it settles in. And I think we're just about there. And a good test rather than a specific measure of frosting uh, and water together is if you kind of draw a spatula or spoon through two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe just still a little bit thick, 
right? I want the line that I draw through there to kind of fade in about seven seconds. So if it's taking more like 10 to 12, it's probably still much too thick. If it's disappearing right away in just a couple of seconds, it's too thin, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see it's almost gone, right? So I think that's going to be a good consistency. It still kind of holds its shape. You can see it takes a little while to settle in on itself, but it's not leaving peaks in the frosting, right? It is settling out completely. So that's going to be great, right? So my blue is ready. I'm going to go ahead and thin out my other colors as well. So I'll do the same thing with the yellow, the green, and the brown. And since I'm using all of these colors to make my little trees, I've got to have them all ready to go before I start working on my shirts. And the green and the brown, I'm just using to do my palm trees. So I'm actually going to do them just a little bit thicker. I'm going to use them to do fine details and I want to have just a little more control with them. And so if you're new to making sugar cookies and you've never made royal icing before, there's a few things that you can do to kind of help things along. Remember that it's a meringue. So anytime you're working with utensils, especially if you make cakes as well and you do a lot of work with butter, do what you would do if you're gonna make any meringue, which is wipe everything down with white vinegar to make sure that you're getting any residual grease off your utensils, whether that's bowls or spatulas like what I'm using now, or your tips and couplers as well. This will keep that meringue nice and uh, sturdy, it'll keep that air cell structure, it'll keep it from degrading if it comes into contact with grease, right? Which can mean that your frosting doesn't dry well. That's beautiful, um, which is a real problem if you're gonna do cookies because then it'll leave the frosting spongy instead of it getting really nice and hard. Um, and you'll go to, you know, do something with them the next day, say pack them up, maybe wrap them, and they'll be kind of a mess. So you always want to make sure you're watching out for grease. And two, if you've never made royal icing before, there's a product you can use to make it rather than using raw egg whites, which is meringue powder. So here in the States, using raw egg whites, salmonella is a real issue. Meringue powder is a dehydrated powdered egg white that has some stabilizers added into it. So things, things like cream of tartar that make a fluffier, more stable, easier to work with product that's actually shelf stable at room temperature for up to two weeks. Um, you can basically just leave it out in, I usually use Chinese quart containers, uh, little takeout containers, and you know just cover it really well. And then if it settles a little bit or separates a little bit, all you have to do is re-whip it. So it's nice, it's shelf stable, it's pasteurized, you don't have to worry about the salmonella, and it's actually a little easier to use than if you're making it from raw egg whites, which you can do. Um, it just gives you a firmer, kind of denser product that's a little more difficult to worry about, and you have to be a lot more careful about how you store and use it. Um, because of the potential risk of foodborne illness. So just a thing to consider, and meringue powder is relatively cheap for how much you're gonna use, right? It might seem expensive at first if you're buying your first can, but a little goes a long way when making royal icing, so one of those cans will really last you for a while. And as long as you keep it airtight, uh, nice kind of stable environment, it actually has a really long shelf life. So you can buy a small can if you do things like this every once in a while and use it whenever you need it. So it's actually a little nice thing to have on hand, especially if you're gonna do stuff like gingerbread houses, royal icing is pretty key for those and is really great. So I'm making my brown and it's just a little too runny. So quick trick 
if you ever get in that little jam. Since I've saved some of the stiff, I can literally just add some of my stiff back in, right? This will help make it just a little bit thicker. And get me to the consistency where I need to be because I'm going to use this for the trunks of my palm trees. So I don't want it to spread out too much. I want to make nice little thin lines and I want them to really kind of keep their shape. So I want it to be loose enough that it'll settle into my blue, but not so loose that I get really, really fat palm tree chunks. Right? So awesome. I think my colors are ready to go. I'm going to use these up really quickly. This isn't a long term project. I'm just, you know, making three cookies. So I'm not even going to put couplers in these bags. I'm just going to get these little bags ready to go. So I'm just going to pick some small tips for things like the brown and the green that I'm going to be using to do small details with. And I'm not using a coupler, so I'm just pushing the tip down in there. And I just want to make sure that the plastic is cut far enough back that all of the opening is exposed. This becomes especially important if you're using otter shapes like basket weave tips or star tips or things like that, but not too far back that when I squeeze, I run the risk of potentially rocketing the tip out of the end of the bag. In general, for tips, you don't want to cut the bag so that it's more than halfway back. So I'm just going to load up a little bit of brown. and get that ready to go and load some of my other colors up as well. And once I get these ready to go, I'm also going to make sure I have a good supply of toothpicks on hand because I'm going to do some cute little pull techniques to create some of the little details. So another small tip, and I'm going to load up some of my yellow. And then in my last bag, I'm just going to put the blue directly down in it. My blue is going to cover the whole surface area of the shirt, so it's going to be kind of big. I'm just going to put it down in the bag and then I'm going to cut the end so it has a nice size opening, but I'm not going to do any precise piping with it, so I don't really need it to use a tip with it. I'm going to keep my blue handy while I'm working because this would be the one color that I need to reload the most often because it's going to cover the whole background. So I'm going to need the most of it. All right, so I've got my bags all ready to go. I've got my blue ready and the other thing I'm going to pull over is a nice offset spatula and this is the tapered variety. I like these for using on cookies because it's really great for pushing frosting into small crannies, nooks, little corners, and also you can get a nice level surface with it. So I like it a little bit more than the blunt end ones. I'm also just going to pull over a few clean toothpicks. That'll help me for doing things like popping bubbles and also doing any little pulls. I'm just going to cut a small corner, right, the tip off of that bag, make sure I get a nice flow of frosting, and I'm going to start flooding my shirts. I'm going to work on them one at a time so that it's easy to see the details and they'll get repeated, right? So I'll start here and just go right next to my outline 
it might seem redundant, but it's going to help a lot when it comes to actually spreading the frosting out. If there's flood already next to that outline, you don't have to push the frosting to the outline. It's going to make life a lot easier. If you just do a big ball in the center and try and push it to all those corners, it's going to take way more time. So even though it seems like you're doing a lot of extra work, it's actually a big time saver when it comes to frosting cookies. So I'm just gonna gently take the spatula and spread the frosting out. I'm gonna use significantly less than I normally would to flood cookies like this, because what I wanna do is leave a little space to add volume with the details. So I'm gonna pipe this little palm tree pattern on here, which means that I'm gonna add a significant amount of volume. So normally when I do cookies, this is the enemy, right? You can see that the frosting is a little wavy and uneven, right? Normally that's not good. If I'm going to flood something all one color, I'd want to add more frosting to this so that it's all nice and level and kind of looks almost puffed up like a water droplet. But because I'm going to add some more color in there, it's going to add some more volume and that's going to do that work for me. So I'm going to start by just adding some little islands. just kind of randomly about. And I can take my little toothpick and just kind of pull the edges. So I just did a little dot shape. And then to give it more of a mounded shape with a tapered end, rather than trying to do controlled piping because we're using relatively loose frosting, I'm just going to use the toothpick just to kind of pull that edges. And that's going to give me a nice little island shaped mound of sand, right? And we're just going to gently, very little pressure, pipe on some little tree trunks. They don't have to be even, they don't all have to be the same size. But you can see I left quite a bit of space between my islands because I need to leave room for the tops of my little trees, which is what I'm going to do with the green. So we're just going to go in and pull some little lines. Right? If I want to get really crazy with it, I could even go back and do things like add coconuts add waves at the bottom of my islands, but for right now, I think these are gonna be good. And I can also do things like use the toothpick if I need to taper the ends of my little palm fronds at all. But you can see right away, we've got that little look, we've got little palm trees and two tiny little islands on a little ocean blue shirt and it is super cute you could do this and do like little sunsets fish whatever you want to do and you can add more detail or do less but when i'm doing complicated patterns like this and i want the frosting to sink in to itself so i want everything to end up looking flat when it's done i usually only work on one or two cookies at a time and that gives me time to go in and put the details without rushing which is important Beautiful, right? So any place I just need to taper that green a little bit. Extend those ends. 
just go in with my toothpick and just kind of alter the direction, just change the shape a little bit. Super cute. It's going to look great. Later, I'm going to pipe on a cute little collar, maybe give it a little pocket, a little central line with some dots to give it some buttons, and then it'll help everything stand out and really read like a nice little Hawaiian print shirt. So I'm going to keep working and I'm going to do my other two cookies. So I'll repeat the design and then I'll work on my little flip flops. So we remember when we do our flood, we're going to leave it just a little bit shallow. So we're going to use less frosting than we normally would, right? So there's going to be some dips and a little bit of an uneven texture to it. But you can see on the other cookie, once we got all those cute little details on there, that frosting evened out, right? So it filled in the rest of it and we didn't have to worry about it. And the important thing here is when the frosting is even like this, it dries at an even rate and it'll get a nice even look to the top. Sometimes when you have little dips like this, if I just left it, you would get areas that look almost a little dusty or kind of chalky. Um, and it kind of ruins the finish of the frosting just a smidge just not exactly what we want, right? So we want nice kind of even look to everything. Did a little pull on the side to help shape them. I'm just gonna go in and put in my little tree trunks. And you can see, as I start to add these details, the frosting starts to even out, right? There's less dips now than when I started because I've added some volume. And doing sunken in designs like this, it's a great way to practice your control and your piping, right? Because the runnier frosting, it's a little unruly. So coming up with cute little designs to challenge yourself is a great way to kind of vary your practice if you're looking to sharpen your skills some. Just go in gently, just kind of pull the tips on some of my little palm trees. Just to adjust the shape. You can see it kind of gives it a slightly different feel. Super cute. All right, so I'm gonna switch places on these two cookies just to make it easier on myself. So one thing to note when you're working on cookies like this, I'm working on a relatively small tray today. I'm just doing three of each. 
But if I were working on a bigger project on a bigger sheet tray, usually I orient the cookies so that I'm not more than two rows away from the edge. Uh, so when I get on the other side, I face them the other direction so that I can turn the tray around and I always kind of work close to myself. If you try to reach too far away, you're gonna be much less stable, right? The further your hand away is away from your body, kind of the less stable your motions are gonna be and the more shaky you might notice things are. So always try and keep your work close to you because that means you can kind of brace yourself on the table, on the edges, and it'll make things a lot easier, right? It's never good to work too far away from yourself. Awesome. So we got some flood on this little one and we are going to go to town and make some cute palm tree covered islands on it. And once we are done with this, we'll switch over, put some flood on our flip flops. And if these aren't quite ready for detail work yet, then we'll switch over and do a cute little cupcake project that'll match up really quickly while we wait for them to set up just a little bit. And I got excited and I'm skipping steps. Wait, I'll just pull the edges of my islands really quickly. All right, now back to brown. Here we go. Fantastic, and then green, right? So I like to think of cookies as kind of tortoise projects, right? If we go the old tortoise and the hare route, it's always slow and steady wins the race. Try to go fast, things will probably get a little messy on you, right? You might notice that they're a lot less precise. And you have more problems. So this is definitely one thing where rushing is the enemy. And this one, I didn't fill too much. So if you need to, at the end, you can just go back and add just little bits of blue here and there, just to even out the level of the frosting. Just because we want to make sure we have enough so we have a nice level surface. This is the important part when it comes to the consistency of your frosting as well because if it's thick enough then you can do things like go back and add colors next to each other without stuff running together. So it's important to pay attention to the consistency of your flood frosting and make sure that you've got it right so that you can play around with it and do the different techniques that you want to do. Because if it's too runny or too thick, it's going to give you problems. Instead of palm trees swaying gently in the wind, it might look a little bit more like a hurricane came through. Gorgeous. So we're going to let these sit while we fill our flip flops. And then we'll probably have some time to do a little cupcake in between. So same as with our shirts, I'm just going to take my yellow, go all the way around the outside right next to that line, a nice squeeze in the middle, and then I'm going to grab a clean offset spatula 
and I'm just going to push it lightly to the edges. And you can see I'm trying to hold the spatula so it's level, which is why the offset is important because my hand is still in a good position, but the frosting is just kind of gliding across the surface. And then if I need to add a little extra and just smooth that out. And the blue didn't really give me any for examples, but if you have any peaks, you can use your toothpick to kind of level those out. Or if you have any air bubbles, I can see one tiny one there. Before the frosting has a chance to crust over and start to set a little bit, which will actually happen on the surface within about five to 10 minutes. So you do wanna do it relatively quickly, especially if you're working on a large number of cookies, is pop any air bubbles you see. Uh, if they're large ones, they can rise to the surface as the frosting sets up and pop at the surface and leave you with voids or little holes. And if they're small, they probably won't do that, but they'll leave you with little round shadows, right? So little kind of darker gray areas in your frosting. So you do want to get rid of them if at all possible. Sometimes you're just going to get a batch of royal icing that just has a million little air bubbles and you won't be able to get rid of all of them. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to do that. But any large ones or ones that you can really visibly see, it's a good idea just to go ahead and get them while you can, if you can. And sometimes too, if you look at the cookies from an angle, like if the light is shining on them, it can be a little bit easier to see because you kind of see the rise in the surface. And I just need to refill my bag really quickly on my yellow and I'll ice my last little flip flop. All right. And as you're working, if it helps, you can always rotate your trays so that things are at a better angle, right? So that it's easy to use your spatula. Fantastic, right? Get a little more frosting in there and just get it nice and level. Beautiful. So we're going to set these to the side for a few minutes. Ideally, if you're doing this at home and you don't have to worry about time, we're trying to get this all done in one video. So we're going to rush it a little bit. You could even let them set overnight. That'll mean that the frosting is completely dry. Royal icing does take eight to 12 hours to dry completely, but usually within an hour or two, there will be a nice crust on there. So if you need to, you can kind of speed through. I'm gonna do it even sooner than that. So my stiff decorations might sink in a little bit. Just know that if you wait some at home, you'll get a better finish on those, right? So we'll put them to the side for a few minutes, let them crust just a little bit. I'm gonna work on a cute little companion cupcake project that'll be really simple and easy for everyone. And then we'll go back and finish the details on those cookies. So I thought it would be cute because I've got Hawaiian shirts and flip flops to just do some cute little pineapple cupcakes. So I just have some cute little lemon cupcakes that I baked up. You could do any flavor, think coconuts, uh, add some pineapple juice, maybe some kind of pina colada themes. And I have a bag with some of that kind of buttery yellow frosting in it and a nice little 104 tip, right? So it's a petal tip. And I'm going to use that to make the kind of little um, segments on the pineapple. And I just have some green fondant curls. So I made a little green fondant, same color ratio, blue, uh, royal blue, sky, and lemon yellow. So same colors. 
And it's really easy to make these little curls. You just need a little bit of green fondant. You could use gum paste as well. But since they're so small because they're just going on top of cupcakes, they don't really need the strength of gum paste. So you can use it if you have it, but if all you have is fondant, that's fine too. Uh, they're so tiny that the fondant will dry firm enough. Like these are from yesterday, right? And they're nice and firm already, right? So you can just roll it out. And I'm using just one of the small nine inch rollers with the guides. And if you need to, if it's a little sticky or humid, which it is today, use just a little bit of powdered sugar. I've got my little puff out as well. And I'm just gonna roll them with the uh, 1 8 guides and use a little pizza wheel, right? So I can just trim the bottom, trim the top, and that makes kind of a rectangular little segment. And then you can just cut little triangles, make some of them skinny, some of them fat, doesn't have to be exact, just kind of work it back and forth. You can cut them smaller, larger, right? And then I usually just lay them on their sides and just curl the little tops over. So that gives me a whole bunch of little kind of um, pineapple leaves for the centers really, really quickly. And I leave some of them really a little straighter and longer and some of them a little curlier. And I just make a whole bunch of those really quickly, really easily, right? And I have a bunch of them already made and they're already kind of stiff because they've had a nice little day to sit out uh, and start to dry out and get a little bit firm. So that's fantastic. And I'm ready to go and to ice my little cupcakes. So this is a good one to do if you're thinking about starting to do things like work with piped flowers, but you haven't really worked with your petal tips a lot yet, and you wanna get a little practice in without maybe getting out the flower nail and doing anything too fancy yet. So I just have a little bit of American buttercream that I've colored with lemon yellow and just a little bit of sunset orange to give it that kind of nice buttery egg yolk like feeling. And I'm just gonna start right with my cupcake and I've got the little skinny end towards the center and I'm just going to gently kind of pipe a little mound there in the center. So nothing special, it doesn't have to look pretty. We're gonna pipe completely on top of that. It's just to kind of give us a nice little shape, right? And now with the skinny end facing out towards the edge of the cupcake paper, I'm just gonna draw little mounds or kind of like U or N shapes. So think little curves. So fat end is back here towards the middle of the cupcake, skinny end towards the outside, right? And I'm just gonna make little rounded shapes, right? Because pineapples have that kind of little scaly look, right? So by going all the way around the outside edge of the cupcake, right? You can go as close to the paper as you want. It's gonna give us a nice little thin layer of buttercream on top. And then I'm gonna pull that tip back closer to the center and I'm gonna go on top and in the middle, right? So you can see it's building kind of successive layers and it gives us that kind of look like a scaly little pineapple. And as you go, you just kind of do concentric circles, work all the way towards the center. You can make the little shapes a little smaller so that they overlap the ones before them. Beautiful. And you can see you have a nice little kind of textured cupcake that right now just looks a little bit like a flower, but our imagination will do a lot of the work for us on a lot of things. And as soon as we add some cute 
little green squiggles in the middle, we get a nice little pineapple. And one thing I like about the fondant is it doesn't dry completely firm. So if you need to make some of your little curls shorter, it's a really easy thing to do. So I usually like to do three around the outside, one in the middle, and we have a nice, adorable little companion project. So if you're doing some stuff for, say, a summer themed pool party, this is a cute, quick little idea for some pineapple cupcakes that if you line them all up, it's gonna look absolutely adorable. You can put in some other citrus designs and it's gonna be really cute and fun. And so our cookies have had a little time and so while stiff will probably sink back in just a little bit, it should be enough for us to work on some of those details. So I'm gonna pull over my cookies again and some of my stiff colors and a few different tips, right? So for my blue, I'm gonna use a small number one tip. And also I have a number 44. I'm gonna use the one to do things like a pocket, a center line and some buttons in my blue stick. And I'm gonna use the 44 to do a collar, right? So this would normally be a basket weave tip Right, so it's got a nice oh, flat opening. Oh, can't really see. There we go. Sorry, it took a little while to focus. Oh, here we go. There we go. So you can see it's flat on both sides. Some of your basket weave tips might have a um, kind of like ridged little set of tines on one side. I'm using the ones that smooth on both sides. So make sure you get the right number. And I'm gonna use that to do a little collar, right? Because it's just gonna do two flat lines. It's really easy. If you wanna do more details, you can always, once these are dry completely, re-outline little areas, do little rectangles and make them flood. But for the sake of making them just a little bit easier, because we've already done quite a bit of work on the cookies, I'm just gonna use this number 44 tip. So you can see, very easy. We're just gonna hold that opening right against the surface to do a nice flat line, right? So I'm gonna do my collars first. I'm just gonna start right here. Go one direction and then meet at that little inside corner. And go the other. And you can see that already, then that gives me like the inside of the neck area and a cute little collar. And if I change to my one tip, I can do the little center line there uh, where the two sections of the shirt meet up and put on some cute little buttons. You know, I'm gonna do my buttons in blue, but if you wanted to add some more detail, you could do them in another color, like maybe the yellow or white or something of that nature. You can always get more detailed with this, right? Beautiful. I'm just gonna do, I think, five buttons. Cute. And I'll put a little pocket. Off to the side. So we have an adorable Hawaiian t-shirt design. Perfect for summer, right? I'm gonna go ahead, switch my tip back, do my collars on my other two, and then I'll repeat my design. And anytime I'm doing cookies, I like to give myself extras, especially if it's for an order, whether it's for an actual customer or just for family or friends. And those give me some extras just to play around with. Um, if I don't like the way something comes out or say I get clumsy fingers and drop something or disturb the frosting on something. It always just gives me a little bit of buffer to make sure that I have enough in the end of finished product that I like the look of. Because there's nothing worse 
than getting to the end and realizing that you are one short on something. And once I get finished with my shirts, I'll go ahead and finish my flip-flops. And for the flip-flops, I'm just doing a quick, easy design. I'm just putting the little thong on them so that they look finished and they look like little flops, but I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. But flip-flops are a cute one. They're easy to do things like add a monogram or a little kind of like design label or something like that. And you can easily do really personalized details on them. You can also make them really ornate. You know, they can have little jeweled thongs. Uh, you can copy designer patterns and do all sorts of fun stuff with them. Or you can keep them really, really simple. A simple two color flip flop is always a great little favor for a pool party, right? So shirts accomplished. I'm going to pull over my bag of green stiff icing and I have another basket weave tip. So numbers 44, 45 are always great to use for this, depending on how wide you want that little thong to be. And I'm just going to draw kind of what I think of as a wishbone shape. So just to kind of give you an idea first with my toothpick, I want to start right over here towards the side, not in the middle because our big toe is not that big. So think about it as you need space for four toes over here and one over here. So starting closer to the inside edge of the flip flop and then curving. And then I'm going to meet up at the bottom of where I guess that little V shape would be and then go to the other side. It's a little hard to describe these, but once I do it, it'll be easy to see, right? So I'm gonna start right over here and curve to the outside edge. So it looks like there's room for my little foot to go in, right? And this top part is the part for the toe and then this is where that branches off. So I'm gonna to pull to the opposite edge and we get a beautiful little flip-flop. Real quick, real easy, easy to do in a wide range of colors and kind of customized to any event. And then I'll go ahead and finish my third one. The line got a little roughly. There we go. So really cute little set of cookies. We've got flip-flops and Hawaiian t-shirts, perfect for any summer festive occasion and super easy to make things like this adorable little pineapple cupcake design to go with. So perfect for any summer holiday celebration. Uh, there's a few things that we used that are really key to making royal icing cookies. So if you don't have these kinds of items, they're definitely a good investment. Things like offset tapered spatulas are a must. Always things like toothpicks, um, some good quality disposable decorating bags. I like the 12 inch size. You can always use reusable ones too. Just make sure if you're using them for buttercream, like for your cakes, that you're washing them really well and hitting them with some white vinegar to make sure that there's no grease in there since it can destroy your frosting. 
some good number one, two, and three tips are always key for working with royal icing, along with any specialty tips like the basket weave ones we use today, which numbers 44 and 45 are good options. As far as coloring, we always use liquid gels. And then one product we really love is meringue powder. Doesn't matter which brand, they're all pretty much the same kind of product and will give you similar results. It just helps to make a shelf stable, sturdier meringue that's gonna be a little bit easier for you to use in terms of your frosting. The colors we used in this were royal blue, sky blue, violet, there it is, lemon yellow, Sunset Orange, and Buckeye Brown. And there's always gonna be things that you need like small mixing bowls and spatulas and lots and lots of couplers. We hope that you all really enjoyed this cute little summer themed project and that you'll tune in for more lives. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.